gentlemen here tonight at the Dean Dome. They are all kinds of fired up. This is one of the premier events, and if you're a team like Ohio State, a team like North Carolina, you know you're going to get one of the best the other conference has to offer. The officials tonight, Ted Valentine and Mike Eads, Pat Driscoll, and we're ready for the tip of our Sonic Blockbuster. Carolina in home white, Ohio State in visiting red. Mike Eads says, come on, everybody, settle down a bit. And we're underway. Ohio State starting out in man-to-man. -man. Luther Muhammad, number one, is guarding Cole Anthony. That puts a little bit of size and length on him. Jump hook. Garrison Brooks in Carolina strikes first. Well, Garrison Brooks, talk about a different player in Caleb Wesson. He is a much better player this year as opposed to last year. Better inside and looking to score more. C.J. Walker at the point for the Buckeyes, a transfer from Florida State. And a travel is the call. Boy, great job by Cole Anthony. He got picked off by a screen up top and then recovered to get in front of C.J. Walker. Looks like he's got a heck of a lot more energy than most sick people do. <laughs> Anthony, top five incoming recruit, the leading freshman scorer in the country. 34 points in his debut against Notre Dame. Leaky Black will knock down a three. And what a start for the Heels. Well, North Carolina thus far this year has had a hard time consistently knocking down shots. They've knocked down their first two in this game. And if they can put some points on the board, this can be a different team than they've shown to be thus far. They are barely shooting 30% from three-point range on the season. And now we got a foul call going against Brandon Robinson. We're all used to seeing Carolina score a ton of points. They have not hit 80 yet this season. First time since 1949. They have not scored 80 points in any one of their first seven games. And in 1949, they did not have the three-point shot. Correct. Corner three, a little bit short for Dwayne Washington, Jr. Offensive rebound, though, for the Buckeyes. Kyle Young turns the corner on Leaky Black. Blocked from behind, Ohio State ball. Boy, that was a really nice job by Leaky Black to keep fighting there. Armando Baycott came over from the weak side, but that looked like it was going to be an easy basket for Ohio State for Young. And now, after conferring, the officials give the ball to Carolina. Chris Holtman not thrilled. His third year as head coach of the Buckeyes after stints at Gardner-Webb and Butler. A couple of second-round NCAA tournament appearances the last two years, but very high hopes for this Ohio State team this season. Wesson and Baycott really going after it down low. Switch on the low cross screen. And Black shuffled his feet. Be a real challenge. Armando Baycott is a really good young big guy, but he's going against Caleb Wesson down low, and Wesson is much wider and stronger. It's going to be hard for Baycott to hold that position, so he's going to have to use his quickness. He's a little bit quicker, I think, than, than Caleb Wesson. Yeah, Baycott has shown a, a nice ability to block shots at the beginning of his Carolina career. Loose ball taken away by Baycott. Tough pass on the screen roll. Little pocket pass. Boy, Brooks is working hard for position. He wants the ball down low. Now he and Baycott kind of run into each other. One trying to set a screen for the other as Brooks pops out. Boy, what a wrestling match underneath with Wesson and Baycott. Robinson. Spacing not great for Carolina right now. Brooks will have to put up a three. Baycott the offensive rebound and might have gotten away with a walk. He did. He took three steps. But Good rebound. This is an excellent rebounding team yet again for North Carolina. They out-rebound their opponents by almost 17 a game. Crazy numbers. And they get better than 40% of their missed shots, which is a huge percentage at the offensive end as Leaky Black air balls a three. Well, Roy Williams will probably tell you we're not only good at rebounding, but we miss a lot of shots. <laughs> right. So it gives, it gives a lot of opportunities. He'd rather that rebounding percentage go down a little bit and see more shots go in. Yeah, they need some of their complimentary players to start putting the ball in the basket a little bit more. But two and a half minutes in, they're up by five here on Ohio State. And one of the problems for North Carolina, they're only shooting 47% on their twos. It's not just their three-point shooting, their perimeter stuff. It's their twos. Washington with a 17-footer, two strong, tipped back out by Andre Wesson, the older brother, Andre the senior, Caleb the junior. Andre, nice look, Washington wide open and buries it. Boy, that is a beautiful pass by Andre Wesson. 
who is just a plug and play guy. You can put him anywhere out on the floor and he can make it work. Plays multiple positions and guards multiple positions. Missed a couple of games earlier this year after suffering a fractured eye socket. Took an inadvertent elbow from a teammate, but he's back and playing well. Wesson, who can shoot the ball, puts it down on the deck, drives baseline, draws really everybody inside the lane. Cole Anthony comes off his man to get in and stop that drive. And that left a wide open shooter, Dwayne Washington, in the corner. Who's their best shooter, better than 50% from beyond the arc on the season. Especially when you get them that wide open. Brooks, one bucket already. And another travel. I didn't see that one. That, he's getting bumped pretty hard. And Brooks is saying to the official Pat Driscoll, watch the replay up in the, the video board in the corner. Yeah, he, he got a, a little forearm there from Young, but I, I did honestly didn't see the walk. This seems like a, a step and pivot. Young slips the screen. Andre Wesson off to his brother Caleb. Now Walker pulls up for a long jumper, misses it wide left. And Andre Wesson, a strong rebound. Caleb Wesson battling for position, has it stripped. But boy, Ohio State comes up with it again. Carolina doing everything it needed to do just to stifle the shot attempt. Good hands by Anthony. It stays with the Buckeyes, but the shot clock is down to four. Well, you had better fight for position down low because Ohio State does a very good job of wedge rebounding. They get their, they get into your body and just push you underneath, especially Wesson, who does such a good job of wedge rebounding. Already four offensive rebounds for the Buckeyes, and now before the ball is inbounded, Baycott is called for a foul. Oftentimes, the referees this year call a flop on this kind of thing. Like, it, it really didn't need... There, there was nothing really there. A little contact on the screen, but it didn't impact Caleb Wesson. It certainly didn't impact him to that level. But that's called selling a call. And, you know, this ridiculous new flop rule that referees have been oftentimes calling that kind of thing as well. Also or at least get, warning it. And Jay also gets the shot clock back to 20 after it had, it had been down to four. Wesson trying to back down Brooks, kicks it out to his brother Andre. And now Walker with a drive. What a block. It'll stay with the Buckeyes, but boy, the, the Tar Heels may not be winning time of possession right now, but they are bound and determined not to give up a bucket to Ohio State. But they are contesting everything. Armando Baycott, that with the left hand. Just a spectacular block. Stewart Scott Day at ESPN here in Chapel Hill. More on that when we come back. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Continental Tire for what you do and in part by TD Ameritrade where smart investors get smarter. Tonight is a special night for us as we remember and celebrate our friend and colleague Stuart Scott who lost his hard fought battle with cancer nearly five years ago. He inspired so many of us. And today is Stuart Scott Day at ESPN, and it's a special day here in Chapel Hill as well. Stuart was a graduate of the University of North Carolina Chapel Hill, was a part of many of the late night with Roy, a season beginning celebrations here for the basketball program. Uh, and his memory and his presence being felt, Jay, all through this arena here tonight, the student section all with signs honoring him, and you see Booyah all over the building as well. And a reminder again that it is V Week, and that the V Foundation has introduced the Stuart Scott Memorial Cancer Research Fund and a great opportunity to make a donation to the V Foundation. Well, every day in Chapel Hill is Stuart Scott Day. Nobody loved this place more than Stu did. He was a Tar Heel through and through. Tar Heels off to a good start tonight, up by five on undefeated Ohio State. Walker baseline, nice kick. Wide open look, Andre Wesson not there. Another offensive rebound, and right now Roy Williams has to be displeased with his team's inability to secure the ball off the defensive glass. After the timeout, there's a little screen set by Young to get Caleb Wesson open for a, a three-point shot. That was something that Ohio State worked on all practice long on out-of-bounds under, was to isolate 
Caleb Wesson and try to get him a three and pull the Carolina Bigs away from the bucket. Now he's down low being guarded by Garrison Brooks, who's an excellent defender inside. Left hand, not there for Wesson, and down with a rebound is Baycott. Yeah, your point, Dan, about rebounding is a big one. The rebounding is going to decide this game because it's going to be a gritty game on both ends. And Ohio State has more bulk. They are the stronger team bulk-wise. Boy, wide open look. I mean, all kinds of time for Washington to put the Buckeyes on top. Anytime in transition defense, you have to find shooters, but the first thing you have to do is find the ball, and North Carolina did not do that. Anthony off balance, won't go, and wrapping up the rebound is Washington, and here comes D.J. Carton, an exciting freshman from Bettendorf, Iowa, number three, finds Washington for another one, and Ohio State piling on with the threes right now. Right, Dwayne Washington has come out firing. As you mentioned, he shoots over 50% on the season from three. When you get open looks like that, that's why. Oh, Anthony, by one man, fouled by the second right as he got to the bucket. And Carton got laid out on a screen. But here in transition, a terrific job passing ahead and then passing back to the wide open. Dwayne Washington, he was able to take a rhythm dribble and here just coming behind and you know he called out to DJ Carton behind you and just passed it and stepped right into that shot. Three threes already tonight for Washington. The sensational freshman Anthony at the line for the heels. As we mentioned, the leading score among freshmen in the nation. Better than 20 points per game. Also a great defensive rebounder for a guard his size. Better than seven rebounds per game for a guy who is 6'3". We had a double-double in his first game against Notre Dame. I think he had 11 rebounds to go along with his 34 points. And Dan Gregg, former UNLV running rebel, former former NBA player in attendance here tonight as Anthony gets a break. The question really for North Carolina is where is offense going to be generated? Well, Brandon Robinson is just back. He's going to have to put some points on the board. Somebody has got to hit shots. Good up and under move. And a nice little scoop there to finish it off by Andre Wesson. Wesson's a good player. He can shoot it, he can put it on the deck, good passer. Kyle Young called for the foul away from the ball. It's just a really nice drive, and Brandon Robinson has to do a better job of keeping him out of the lane, not getting that straight line drive, and then he can't go for that fake. That's obviously easier said than done when you're playing against a quality, quality offensive player. Buckeyes, as we mentioned, are 7-0 on the season. All seven games have been at home. They beat Cincinnati by eight in their first game of the season, have had some lopsided wins over lesser opposition. Also, they pounded Villanova, beat the Wildcats by 25, 76 to 51. But this is the first time they've left home this season. A screen for the screener action to get Keeling a shot and missed everything. Christian Keeling, grand transfer from Charleston Southern, blocked from behind, Buckeye ball. Carton is quick. This is a good defensive team that Ohio State has. Another freshman for the Buckeyes. That is E.J. Liddell from Belleville, Illinois, and the lead grows for Ohio State. Liddell is a two-time Illinois Mr. Basketball. The last to do that in Illinois was Jabari Parker. But right now, Ohio State is just bigger and stronger. They're knocking North Carolina off the ball on both ends. Justin Pierce, no, but the follow will go. And we have an injured Tar Heel. Baycott is still Baycott down. Baycott still down and grimacing in a lot of pain. And now they are blowing the whistle. They are stopping play with Baycott down, which you don't always see. Usually they wait maybe till the play finishes. Well, they wait yeah. until it's, if it's a break, they're going to yeah. let it go. But if it's not a fast break, they'll blow it dead. And obviously favoring his left leg, exactly what it is, we can't know. But Baycott in a lot of discomfort right now. He's jumping around like an ankle, but I didn't see what it was. Five in white. Yeah, might have yeah been he right stepped, there. On, stepped on somebody's foot yeah. there. There's so many bodies underneath. Yeah. Stepped on the right foot of Liddell. And North Carolina really can't afford to lose a score like Armando Baycott is coming off 
really his best game was just terrific against Oregon and North Carolina does not beat Oregon without Baycott's performance. He had 23 points, 12 rebounds and six blocks which is the first time a Tar Heel big guy put up 23 12 and 6 since Rashid Wallace right. and only the second time ever uh, Wallace and Baycott the only two ever to have those kinds of numbers and he is needing a lot of assistance to get to the locker room and this will force Carolina to use a smaller lineup Garrison of Brooks is now the biggest guy they've got out there and after that it's probably Justin Pierce the grad transfer from William and Mary number 32 Here comes a scramble trap and it gets them the ball Brooks off to black he'll pull up to the mid range jumper and miss it long North Carolina just really struggles to shoot the ball. And that is deflating after a while. Puts a ton of pressure on your defense. How about two nice little turnaround jumpers from the freshman E.J. Liddell. E.J. Liddell can absolutely score. He can also step away. He is a matchup nightmare. And he's only going to get better. Keeling turns the corner. Tough shot and missed it all. This is a guy who scored better than 1,600 points in three years at Charleston Southern. Heels need some offense from him. Buckeyes are getting it from everybody right now. Luther Muhammad is the Buckeyes have hit their last six shots. Well, I think that shot by Christian Keeling was a bad shot. And you take a bad shot, that's the first pass in your opponent's fast break. So it's no wonder that Ohio State got a layup as a result of that. The bad shot just puts your defense transition in a, in a really bad spot. Pierce can't get the three off. Black finds Brandon Robinson, who's got a much bigger role this year. And we get a foul away from the ball to take us to the under 12 media timeout. It's been all Ohio State in the last couple of minutes. Everybody who's touching the ball seems to be scoring the ball. E.J. Liddell with a nice turnaround jumper over Garrison Brooks. And then the run out and the easy layup for Luther Muhammad to extend the lead to eight. This is the 21st installment of the Big Ten ACC Challenge. ACC's won 12, Big Ten 5. Three of them have ended in ties. Big Ten's up 6 5 right now with this game and two others ongoing. Louisville beat Michigan rather handily last night. Duke beat Michigan State rather handily last night. And then Purdue just smothered Virginia 69 to 40. Maryland also with a fairly lopsided win over Notre Dame earlier tonight. I suggest to you, Mr. Billis, that yes, I know Michigan lost badly and Michigan State as well, but those two schools, you know they're going to make noise. Maryland's really good. Ohio State's really good. Indiana with a nice win over Florida State as Robinson knocks down along too. Purdue with a very nice win over Virginia. I think the Big Ten might be the most interesting conference in the country this year. It's going to be very competitive, and the ACC not as competitive right now as it was last year. You know, North Carolina's not as good as they were last year. Virginia's nowhere close. I mean, Virginia cannot score. What a pass. Luther Muhammad loving the dish, and E.J. Liddell loving the finish. Well, Ohio State's got so many different guys who can initiate the offense. We have seen it from Walker, from Parton, from Muhammad. Yeah, they have, they have multiple guys that can score, but their movement is really good. They set a lot of ball screens, and then they will either slip it, they can space, or they can roll hard to the basket, and they move with a purpose. They are really difficult to guard. Muhammad up for a three, not there, and Anthony down with the rebound. He checked back in after the timeout. Carolina needs a spark for three. Tipped back out. And the foul is going to go against Ohio State. It'll be number two on Luther Muhammad. Well, Luther Muhammad on the last, last end. Look at this job after the roll to the basket by Liddell. Finds him with a beautiful wraparound pass. Watch it went right past the ear of Justin Pierce to Liddell. Liddell does a good job of presenting himself, but nobody picks him up. Now, if you're going to trap, somebody has to come over and pick up the roller. And because of that movement that we talked about, you know, Ohio State is hard to pick up because you're man oriented and then they're really hard because of that movement. They're really hard to box out. Robinson into Brooks. That's his favorite shot. The jump hook not there this time though when Liddell rips down the rebound. Let's bring in Brooke. Guys, well, I listened to the Ohio State huddle and they talked a lot about that spacing, Jay, that you mentioned. Uh, they were very pleased with what's going on with the guards getting spacing and getting shots in the middle of the paint, but they do want to see more defensive rebounding from the guards. In fact, they want five more defensive rebounds by guards this half. 
All right, Brooke, thank you. Air ball from the corner there by Dwayne Washington, Jr. And Anthony is bumped at the other end by C.J. Walker. Really all the transition in this game has been in favor of Ohio State. Part of that's been North Carolina has not run its best offense. But without Armando Baycott in the game, you know, that takes away a scoring threat and puts a lot more pressure on Cole Anthony and on Garrison Brooks. And we see Brandon Huffman enter the game for the first time, a 6'10 junior from Goldsboro, North Carolina. If you weren't with us, Armando Baycott has left the court area, has gone back to the locker room. It looked like he rolled his left ankle. We don't have any update on the severity or whether or not he will return. So Roy Williams is going to a very big guy, Jay, but a guy who doesn't play a whole lot. Yeah, not the most mobile big guy, but he does take up a lot of space. Nice pick and pop. And that's a shot that Garrison Brooks would not have taken nor made often last year. A much more confident offensive player this year. Yeah, Brooks at about 13 points, eight rebounds per game in the early going for Carolina that lost so much from last year's team. Well, Cam Johnson, Luke May, Kobe White, Nasir Little, Kenny Williams. I mean, terrific players. And, and good shooters. Yep. They lost a lot of shooting from last year. What a pass by Robinson. And Anthony drills it from the corner to get the heels back within three. That was a fantastic pass by Brandon Robinson. Brandon Robinson, a very versatile player, but off the offensive rebound, immediately attacks the middle and then looks out. It is the best time to shoot a three off an offensive rebound. And Brandon Robinson saw it the whole way. Andre Wesson just helped in because he was going to rebound and couldn't recover. I think they need to go to Caleb Wesson here and let him take advantage of that matchup now. A switch. Washington will step back and bury the three. Huffman realized he was out on an island. There was nothing he could do. And that is four threes already tonight for Washington. Brandon Huffman's mobility is going to be an issue against Ohio State. He was taken advantage of there on a switch when he switched out on Washington. Washington just shot it right away. Wide open three, Anthony, and another assist for Robinson. Boy, if Cole Anthony's sick, maybe he ought to breathe on some of the other guys. <laughs> Knock some shots down. He is a stud. Carolina averages less than six threes per game. They got four already tonight. Wesson turns it over with a travel. And a big momentum shift here in the last couple of minutes. Led by who else? Cole Anthony. Robinson keeps finding him. Anthony keeps knocking him down. They're back within three. And when we come back, Cole Anthony's going to do even more, going 94 feet with Jay Billis. Hey. Hey. Your dad was a great player. What was it like growing up with a dad that had that kind of rep and, and game and name? It was cool. I mean, for a while, it was always, man, that's Greg Anthony's son. But there was a turning point where they start thinking, man, that's Cole Anthony's dad. <laughs> How much did your dad talk to you about the game? He's really into it. He's almost as into it as me. It used to be he would call me after a game. I have to tell him, yo, shut up, dad. Stop talking to me. But probably after my freshman year, I would then start to call him because I realized he knows what he's talking about. So I'm going to try to do everything I can to take all that knowledge from him. Cole Anthony, Dad Greg, who's here in the building tonight. So technically not at 94 feet. How was, your, how was your rebounding intensity there when you were rebounding for Cole Anthony? Yeah, it's another problem of, of me not being used properly. <laughs> uh, you know, I shouldn't have been rebounding. I should have been shooting. You want to win? Put me in. Three-point lead, Ohio State over Carolina. Cole Anthony, highly talented, highly competitive. A driven young man wants to be the best. And that ball will stay with Ohio State, 15 on the shot clock. And he's the kind of guy, when you watch a game, whether it's in person, and this is the first time I've seen him in person, or on TV, you kind of can't take your eyes off him for most of the game. Ohio State running a little ball screen with their point guard and two guard, which allowed Caleb Wesson to try to post up, but Carton just didn't see him in there. He should have gotten him the ball. Or C.J. Walker, excuse me. A 
blocked by Brooks, but then a foul on Carolina as Ohio State comes down with yet another offensive rebound, which has arguably been the biggest problem so far tonight for the Tar Heels, who, by the way, will not get Armando Baycott back tonight. Steve Kirshner, the sports information director for the Heels, telling us that Baycott will not return. So Baycott's out, Jay, and that's number two on Garrison Brooks. So Roy Williams has some issues right now. It puts a ton of pressure on Garrison Brooks now. And obviously foul trouble is an issue, so is minutes. But you wonder, is it going to be an opportunity or a chance that you're going to see North Carolina have to play some zone? Landed on the foot of an opposing player, landed on Liddell's foot and crumpled to the court immediately. Needed a lot of help getting to the locker room and will not return. Right now, Garrison Brooks going to the bench, Justin Pierce coming in. So North Carolina much smaller with the exception of Huffman, who is not the most mobile big man. So I would not be surprised to see Ohio State try to spread the floor a little bit. Put Brandon Huffman in as many ball screen situations as they can. Black off to Andrew Playtech, who's getting regular minutes this year. Again, with all the departures from last year's team. Black getting more minutes. Robinson getting more minutes. Playtech getting more minutes. They need Playtech to knock down some shots. Pierce. He'll miss the wing three. And Carton saves it off to Walker. A really nice job by Ohio State to guard that little cross screen screen for the screener action. And then limit North Carolina to one challenge shot. Here's the ball screen action to try to get Huffman away from the bucket. Make him switch. Stolen away by Pierce. Looked like he was thinking dunk on the way up, then decided to lay it in. It's a three-point game. Smart play by Justin Pierce to shoot that gap. And that's where you have to use a pass fake. Pierce, the grad transfer from William and Mary, averaging about 7.6 rebounds per game, and an Ohio State turnover. Number six. And Chris Holtman. I'm not sure he was going to put Caleb Wesson back in, but Wesson got up off the bench and went right <laughs> to the scores table, almost knocked Holtman down. <laughs> So Young heads to the bench. Wesson back in. Wesson, as we mentioned, 35 pounds lighter than he was a year ago. Worked out for some NBA teams. Tested the waters. Got the word. You got to slim down. You got to guard the pick and roll better. And he took the advice to heart. And a foul on the baseline going against Alonzo Gaffney, another member of the freshman class. He's from Cleveland. Wesson, a year ago, up around 290 pounds. And now down in the mid 250s. But it really has improved his mobility. We watched a, a fair amount of tape of Ohio State. And he's done a really nice job of moving his feet. He's getting out on ball screens now and guarding him and guarding him for multiple dribbles. Black off to Robinson. Boy, Pierce flattened Carton with a screen. And Gaffney down with a rebound. 6-9 with Springs, AJ. He is a really talented athlete. It's a really good freshman class. The guy with the ball, Carton. We've already seen Liddell. Gaffney as well. And Wesson fouled from behind by Huffman, his second. Sunday on ABC and the ESPN app. If you want more Billis, you'll get more Billis, along with Jason Benetti, a Lone Star State showdown between Texas and Texas A&M from Fort Worth, 3 o'clock Eastern, again on ABC and the ESPN app. So Caleb Wesson is really doing a good job of ducking in, of throwing his body right into a postman and creating space in the lane. That drew that foul on Huffman. Now Garrison Brooks back in. There's some tough decisions here for Roy Williams with a bay caught out and foul trouble for the rest of the bigs. Rolling the dice so that Brooks can get through the half without picking up his third. And another steal by Pierce. Good job by Pierce to front the post, but a really poor pass by Dwayne Washington. Right now, North Carolina, there's nobody to throw the ball to in the post. Pierce. This is the three. West in the rebound for the Buckeyes. Usually, North Carolina plays inside out. Wow, another turnover. This one, a line ball turnover. Two on one. And the Buckeyes get back in time to prevent an easy bucket. 
Heading to the line is Anthony, and he looks like he took a shot to the face. He is shaken up. Well, Ohio State has been pretty sloppy with the ball the last couple of possessions. Looks like there's some blood drawn there. Yep. Yeah, look at his forehead. Oh, wow. He got hit hard in the forehead. The blood's coming from right about the hairline, it seems like. Let's take a look at where he got hit. Yeah, Gaffney got him with an elbow right on top of his head. This has not been a not been an easy night for North Carolina freshmen. Baycott already out with an ankle injury, and now Anthony bleeding quite a bit as he makes his way to the bench. And Mike Eats is on his way over. Not sure if they'll have a look at this to decide if they want to upgrade it or not. Yeah, because because there is blood, North Carolina gets to pick uh, who they want off their bench to come in and shoot the free throws. Looks like it'll be Playtech. He just checked in while they do some work on Anthony. Looks like it's late on the way down there, maybe like a, almost when Anthony had landed already. Yeah, it was it was the right elbow of Alonzo Gaffney. He went after the ball and just caught him right on top of the head. So it's a common foul on Gaffney, and it'll be Andrew Playtech shooting the free throws for Anthony. Playtech is a, a very good shooter, but has really struggled to shoot the ball this season. Like he's th came into this game three of 18 from three-point range. And, and even stranger, he made his first two on the season and is one for 16 since. As they continue to work on Anthony and try to get the bleeding stop so they can get him back into the game. Already without Baycott. But what a critical four and a half here for Carolina, depending on when Anthony may be able to come back with Brooks out there with two fouls. One of two, two point game. We saw that we called this four under clear. That's a horn set with a ball screen, and they empty the side. Boy, nobody stepped up to stop Walker, and he rattles home a 15 footer. Yeah, that's just way too easy. But this is a very well drilled Ohio State team. They've got a good blend of youth and experience, and, uh, and they are talented. But what I really like about this team is they defend. They're great talkers, too. Chris Holtman was telling us to shoot around today. They're all in it together, great communicators, and they work as a unit out there defensively. Black with the shot clock at three. Playtech's got to get it off. In and out, kept alive by Pierce. And it's Carolina ball. Looked like the last 10 seconds of the shot clock or so that Ohio State was switching everything and trying not to allow a decent shot. Four point lead Buckeyes 339 to go in the first half. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by USAA proud supporter of the military community. What you're made of we're made for. Kev Fons and Coach Jeep halftime report on the way. Fons, what's been the key for the Buckeyes so far? Well, we talked about the depth of their perimeter. Dwayne Washington off to a great start. Four of six from three for a team that shoots 40% from three. I would think that Chris Holtman is really comfortable with the pace of this game. He wants this game more in the half court. Their depth can wear them out. They've done a good job of keeping the game in front of them. Got to take care of the ball, though. We'll see you at the half back to Dan and Jay in Chapel Hill, guys. All right, Kevin, thank you very much. And good news for the Tar Heels. Cole Anthony has been taken care of the blood flow has stopped after that cut in his forehead and he's back in the game. Well they need him to generate offense North Carolina is hanging in there against Ohio State. But Ohio State has been too loose with the ball they have turned it over and really prevented in large measure themselves from taking a bigger lead here. I'll tell you what other whatever Roy Williams said to Cole Anthony it cracked the young man up. He was laughing heartily before he came back into the game. Four point lead Buckeyes. 
Carolina 6-1 of the season, just got back from the Bahamas. What a block there by Robinson, and he saves it as well, or did he? No. Nope. It's out of bounds to Ohio State. What a tremendous job by Brandon Robinson to come over from the weak side because Liddell had an angle on Justin Pierce. That was going to be an easy basket, maybe even a foul. That was a bucket saving block by Brandon Robinson. Tar Heels maintaining that he did save the ball. The call goes Ohio State's way. Only loss for Carolina this year was to Michigan in a semifinal game. Down in the Bahamas, and they bounce back from that to beat Oregon in the third place game. Andre Wesson, no uncontested rebound. Anthony, not sure that was the shot Ohio State wanted. The shot he can make, but that was contested very, very well by Garrison Brooks. Brooks trying to post on Wesson down low. Robinson driving, kicks it back out. Brooks wide open for a 17 footer. It's a two point game. Boy, good pass to find the open man, Garrison Brooks. And Caleb Wesson just not, he was helping off, just wasn't able to recover. And here comes the noise at the Dean Dome. Boy, without Armando Baycott and not really being able to hit a shot in multiple positions, North Carolina has really hung tough in this one. Liddell had it and lost it. And here comes Leaky Black. Carolina with a chance to tie or take the lead. Robinson using the screen from Brooks can't get the shot off. Now he will. Not a good offensive possession for North Carolina. That was not the shot that Roy Williams wanted. Andre Wesson steamrolling Brandon Robinson. I'm not sure Chris Holtman's got to be puzzled right now with what his players are thinking. This is their first, really first big true road game. And that was not a, a veteran play by Andre Wesson. Just went right into the chest of Brandon Robinson when his younger brother Caleb trying to post up in the middle of the lane. Just nowhere to go. And Roy Williams is going to get Brooks out of there with a minute 49 to go in the half. Well, he right. took one in the chest from yeah. Caleb Wesson. I mean, he was having a hard time breathing. Huffman is back in. A little box set. Now, be a little stagger away. Anthony forces it up, was looking for the foul call, didn't get that, didn't get the bucket either. And now Chris Holman's going to call out a play to make sure they do something good here. This one, Huffman. Well, that looked like it hit the backboard. Take a look at this drive, little hesitation move. That hit the backboard. Yep. Boy, it's amazing how often that's missed. I mean, it's not the easiest call in the world, but you know, when you can see it 50 feet away, you think you should be able to see it closer. Washington to the bench, Carton in for Ohio State. That is credited as the fifth block of the night for the Tar Heels. Whose last lead was at eight to six? Huffman wants it down to the post. Anthony's going to give him a chance. And again, maybe not the shot Carolina's looking for. Huffman plays sparingly and not really a fluid offensive player. Well, if he had caught the ball a step closer to the bucket, that's exactly where he'd want it. He got it a step off the lane, and that's a longer shot and a much more difficult shot for Brandon Huffman. The women's Jimmy B Classic presented by Corona Sunday at 4 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Notre Dame taking on number four UConn at Gamble Pavilion in stores. We've got the men's Jimmy B doubleheader coming up Tuesday night from Madison Square Garden in New York City. What a move by Anthony. Can't finish. Keeps it alive. Carolina ball. Now the doubleheader at the Garden during V Week on Tuesday. The first game Louisville and Texas Tech. And the second game, Indiana and UConn. Should be a great night. Boy, Louisville really threw it down on Michigan. Just a dominant performance to beat Michigan by double digits and hold the Wolverines under 50 after they won that battle for Atlanta's tournament down in the Bahamas. Third foul on Huffman, but he has given Roy Williams some necessary minutes here tonight and now with him having three and Brooks having two and Baycott being injured now it'll be Walker Miller 
a sparingly used 6'11 junior from Greensboro who checks into the game for the final 33 seconds of the half. Well, Huffman cannot pick up a, a foul screening. He's such a big body. And make somebody run around you. Just stop and let the cutter use the screen. If you're Ohio State, you want to get it inside to Wesson on this trip? You want to let him touch it, absolutely. He'll step out, set a screen. He'll pop. Thought about the three. Instead, Walker, and they turn it over. Ten turnovers, Jay. And, and seven of them have come in the last probably six minutes. Just a little too loose with the ball. North Carolina's defense has been good, but it hasn't been good enough to force some of the turnovers. They've been unforced. Friday is another star studded doubleheader from the NBA on ESPN and the ESPN app as well. Nikola Jokic, Jamal Murray, and the Nuggets take on Kemba and the Celtics at 8 o'clock Eastern, and then the late game. LeBron and AD and the Lakers in Portland to take on the Trailblazers. Our coverage begins with NBA Countdown at 7 on ESPN and the ESPN app. Carolina, despite the injury and the foul trouble and Anthony having to leave, down by only two. And looking for the last shot of the half, it'll be Anthony No. And that'll bring a low scoring first half to a close. Ohio State didn't score at all in the last four minutes and 16 seconds, but they will still take a two point lead into halftime. 29 27 over Carolina here with the Dean Dome. And Brooke Weisbrod is with Chris Holman, the coach of the Buckeyes. Coach, an eight point lead early on for your club, but some turnovers have really allowed UNC back into this game. How does that need to change? We got to turn over less. You know, that's bottom line. We got to turn over less. We got sloppy. We got a little bit careless. Their pressure bothered us, and then we just, instead of catching the ball, we tried to do something with it. But it's what happens on the road. You got to deal with some of the ups and downs that happen, and, and uh, we know they'll play better in the second half, and, and we need to take care of the ball better. Thank you. Two point lead for Ohio State at halftime. Come on back and join us for the second half, but first time after the halftime report, back to the studio with the Fonz and Seth. Here's Kevin Connors. Welcome back to the Big Ten ACC Challenge presented by Continental Tire at ESPN Sonic Blockbuster. Ohio State taking on North Carolina at a low scoring first half. The Buckeyes leading by two. Cole Anthony just two for ten in the first half for the Tar Heels. Dwayne Washington Jr. with four threes to lead the way for Ohio State. Some injury trouble for the Tar Heels, some foul trouble for the Tar Heels, but they've managed to find a way to stay within two of the Buckeyes. Did a pretty good job yep. defensively and sort of hung in there throughout the game. But uh, you're not going to you're not going to hang 27 points on a team in the second half and, and hope to win. I think for Ohio State. What the Buckeyes need to do is take better care of the ball one. They had 10 turnovers in that first half and not all of them were forced. And they also need to do a better job of getting the ball to Caleb Wesson and letting him go to work. Moments to go. Brooke Weisbrode with Roy Williams. Coach Williams a very very physical game out there. Your two best players sustaining injuries. Who can step up with Armando Baycott being out in the post. Well Armando was sensational for us against Oregon but we don't have him so somebody else has got to step up. Huff goes in and makes three fouls and that can't help us there. Somebody's got to step up. We shoot 28 percent get out rebounded by nine. We're only down two so I feel like we stole something already but we got to play better in a second. Thank you. Also without Sterling Manley of course another guy who could have helped out in the middle but he's been out all season with a knee injury so a lot on Garrison Brooks right now as we take a look at tonight's first half stats brought to you by Vanguard as mentioned Washington leading the way for the Buckeyes four threes accounting for his 12 points Anthony just two for 10 eight points overall Baycott out for the rest of the night with an ankle injury and Ohio State shut out for the last 416 as we are officially ready for the second half of our Sonic blockbuster matchup. You know, for North Carolina when the Tar Heels have the ball in their offensive end taking better shots will give them a better opportunity at offensive rebounds. They really didn't get a lot of offensive rebounds in the first half. Ohio State did going right inside to Wesson power move and he knocks it down. Yeah, there's no question Ohio State has got to go into Caleb Wesson more often and especially down in the low post. He just got into the chest of Garrison Brooks backed him up to get to that left shoulder for the jump hook. And again a reminder Brooks playing with a couple of fouls missed the open jumper tipped out to Leaky Black who can't finish. Black working hard to try to corral it but it comes down to Muhammad. 
numbers for the Buckeyes. Good pass. They can't convert, but Muhammad does run it down. And Ted Valentine blew the whistle. I think maybe he was concerned something might have been wrong with Leaky Black as Black was limping, and he's now undoing and retying his left shoe, but it looks like Roy Williams is going to take him out. Doesn't appear to be favoring anything too badly as he makes his way to the bench, but yet another physical concern potentially here for the Tar Heels tonight. Yeah, I think that was just a mistake by the official being a little a little too cautious with uh, what he thought might have been an injury because it wasn't. Going inside to Wesson again, double team, kick it out. Walker, runner, no. Boy, every loose ball's a battle here tonight, isn't it? Well, North Carolina's been challenging at the rim. Everything for North Carolina has been a jump shot. They're not getting anything in the paint. That paint has been very well protected by Ohio State. And I'm not sure this team, this this particular North Carolina team, is going to jump shoot their way to a victory in this ball game. They have got to find a way to the rim. Robinson, the pull-up, got it. Boy, how big of a role does he have this year after really being a, a complimentary player? His first three years, Jay, he is now playing over 29 minutes a game. And averaging 11 points a game. He had 13 against Oregon, 12 against Alabama in the Bahamas. Great pass. And Wesson is fouled. It's the deck hard. Looks like it's going to be on Anthony, and it is. Ohio State just getting into a little high-low look. And there's no pressure on the passer, so Washington able to look in there. Christian Keeling's got to get there, make him put it on the deck, or at least turn his back. And then the first play of the second half where he catches the ball, has isolation on one side, and just bulls his way into the middle of the lane to get to that left shoulder. Wesson, an 80% free throw shooter on the season. He's on the preseason watch list for the Carl Malone Award, one of 20 mentioned as a guy who could be in line to be the best power forward in the country this year. Chris Holtman told us during shoot around today that he's quote a leader and has everything that you want in terms of intangibles and he wasn't the only guy that coach Holtman said that about he really likes his guys and uh, he might not love the way they executed at the offensive end of the first half but he's a big fan of his team so far this year. No I think he really likes this team and he should they play hard they play together. You know they haven't they, they blitzed Villanova. I mean, they absolutely crushed Villanova. Now, the Wildcats could not hit a shot. They had a number of open shots. They just couldn't make them. But I thought Ohio State played really well. Pass is deflected. And here comes Walker. Three on two. Walker trying to go the distance. Got it up on the glass, but can't finish it. Well, Ohio State has had so many opportunities near the rim. And North Carolina has been challenging, but they haven't been blocking the shots. And as you said, Ohio State's just been struggling a bit to finish. That was a good decision by Walker. Looked off the defender and had a great opportunity to finish that. Crowd got to look at a replay, and it should have been Carolina ball. A break for the Buckeyes to retain possession. They're going inside to Wesson again. Wesson got a screen, then there was a screen for the screener. They used a guard to screen him into the post. Washington with a drive, a finish, and a foul to boot. Well, that's a great job of moving the ball. The fans here are booing because they thought the ball went out of bounds off Kyle Young, and they are probably right. I think it did, too. Yeah, it did. That ball was a missed call. But after the missed call, it was a, a good offensive possession for Ohio State. Second foul on Anthony and a three point play for Washington who is the leading scorer in the game tonight. Well, this is an important stretch for North Carolina. The Tar Heels have to be able to generate some offense. Carolina coming into the game averaging under 75 points per game again have not scored 80 in a game yet have not shot 50 percent in a game yet as Anthony draws the foul. C.J. Walker with the foul and you, you just can't foul in that situation where you haven't even had a pass made and Cole Anthony's having to take a fade away along the baseline. Just challenge it get a hand up but don't foul. One of the reasons you don't want to foul a player like Cole Anthony on that kind of shot is it allows him to go to the free throw line and see the ball go through the net. 
and all scorers, it doesn't take long or doesn't take much for a scorer to start feeling it. And you don't want to let him see the ball go through the net. And again, for those who weren't with us off the top of the show, there's been nothing noticeable tonight, but we were told shortly before the game that he was not feeling well, a bit of a fever, upper respiratory situation. And Roy Williams went so far as to come out of the court about 13 minutes before the game started, with about 13 on the game clock as it was winding down, talk to Anthony and to find out if he was okay to play. And he's played, and as is always the case, he's played a lot of minutes. Off a screen, Washington driving hard, finishes with a left hand. Now Carolina trying to push. Keeling, and he's run down by Walker, but Walker's out of bounds. Really good job here. Watch, you're going to see a curl off this screen, and it's going to be wide open as Dwayne Washington comes off, and that's where Garrison Brooks has to help. You know, he's got to get there and try to close off that gap and then recover to Caleb Wesson. But nobody gets in, even from the weak side, to close down that paint. And right now, Ohio State is scoring in the paint, and North Carolina have to do it off the jump shot. And Young beats the Carolina Bigs down the floor to extend the lead to nine. This could get away from North Carolina here if they don't get some stops and scores. The amount of pressure on North Carolina's defense when you cannot score is immense. Walker defending Anthony, shot clock at 10. And Anthony's sending all screens away. He wants to take it on his own, but does. That's just a big time player making an individual play. You know, Justin Pierce and Garrison Brooks wanted to come up and set a ball screen. Anthony's like, no thanks. Yeah. Appreciate it, but I got this. <laughs> That's a guy who clearly feels no matter how many have not gone in tonight, that the next one is going in. Not sure that was the shot for Ohio State. Anthony might try it again. Got another one. Dad Greg, one of the few still sitting here at the Dean Dome right now. Boy, how quickly did the complexion of this game change after those threes? A block is called on the heels. Robinson called for the foul. Well, Ohio State looked like the, they might try to move this out, but Cole Anthony made two terrific individual plays. The clear out and pull up jump shot, then in transition, little step back for three. All of a sudden, it's a one possession game. He looks like he feels okay. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Sonic. Enjoy a Biggie Cheese for a limited time only at Sonic. Again tonight to honor our friend and our former colleague Stuart Scott. It is Stuart Scott Day at ESPN and his presence is felt throughout the building here at the Dean Dome, a graduate of UNC Chapel Hill. A huge supporter of the program, a huge supporter of the V Foundation prior to his diagnosis. Unfortunately, very sadly, Stewart lost his battle about five years ago. It is V Week. You can support the Stuart Scott Cancer Research Fund at V.org slash donate. Well, we all had the opportunity to work with Stuart Scott. He was an amazing professional. I worked the NBA draft with him one year. And Stu was about as Carolina blue as anybody I've ever met and couldn't have been nicer. But I think he did have a healthy distrust of me based upon <laughs> where my diploma was. From. <laughs> we, we worked through it. Yep. Well he had passion too. He had energy. Let's had bring everything. Yeah. Let's bring in Brooke. I had an opportunity to meet Stuart Scott when I applied for Dream Job. You remember that reality show contest yeah. <laughs> to be, well, basically what I'm doing now. So it ended up working out anyways, but Stuart was just so gracious with his time and just telling us all these amazing stories about his career, his passion. And that's the thing that just really stuck through to me was how much he loved doing what he did. And I said, that's, that's it. I'm going to follow in his footsteps. And great to see the student sections here. Uh, at the Dean Dome with the T-shirts and the signs and the players, Carolina players wore uh, warm-up T-shirts honoring the memory of Stu Scott before the game tonight. 
Cole Anthony with a couple of quick threes a couple of minutes ago to make more of a game of it. This has been a physical game. Play check rejected. I mean, there have been so many instances where fouls could have been called, and there's been absolutely nothing. How about C.J. Walker? What a difference it is for Ohio State this year with Walker, the transfer from Florida State, and then also Carton, the freshman, giving them one and at times like now two very capable quick ball handlers on the court. Well, Carton gives them more scoring. Walker more of a playmaking guard, and he's such a smart defender. But to have a guard, I mean. CJ Walker played at, at Florida State on their Elite 18. Yeah, he's had high level experience. And a guy who played in this building, too. Nobody else for Ohio State had ever played in this building before, but Walker did with Florida State. Good defense by wow. Cole Anthony to stay in front of Carton. Ball's got to go to Caleb Wesson. There it is. It goes to Wesson for a three, and the long rebound will bounce out of bounds to the heels. I think Wesson needs to touch it down in the post. You know, Ohio mm -hmm. State's done their damage in the paint. And he needs to get the ball down in the low block. Roy Williams takes a timeout. Heels down by nine to the Buckeyes here in Chapel Hill. It's V Week on ESPN as we continue Jim Balvano's fight against cancer. And Tuesday, we'll have the 25th annual Jimmy V Classic presented by Corona from Madison Square Garden in New York City. Great doubleheader, Texas Tech and Louisville in the first game at 7 o'clock Eastern time, and then Indiana and UConn in the second game. Both games available on ESPN and the ESPN app. A chance to see some great college basketball and raise money for a very important cause. And Louisville just wiping the floor with Michigan last night. A little slice cut. That is really hard defense played by Kyle Young. Really got into the body of Garrison Brooks and really wouldn't even let him make that cut. North Carolina only six points in the paint in this game. That is almost unheard of for a North Carolina team. And look at how hard they're having to work just to get close to getting a shot off. And at the end of the clock, Anthony's going to have to create. A miss by Robinson, who had a great opportunity. And down with it is Liddell. Meanwhile, Ohio State has 20 points in the paint, and I don't think they've really gotten the ball into the post as often as they can. They've been got, getting stuff off the drive. And a three for Carton. His first points of the night. The lead is a dozen. It's the biggest lead of the game for the Buckeyes. Inside to Brooks, who's fouled. That's where North Carolina needs to go. But DJ Carton on the other end, the lefty freshman, he is going to be a big time player. He's second on this team in scoring and assists, but he's very poised, really quick. He's got a terrific first step and just a, a very nice catch and shoot, but an explosive burst. Mr. Really, Bas oh, really sorry, competitive kid, yeah. too. Mr. Basketball in the state of Iowa as a high school senior as Brooks knocks down the first. Do they have Mr. Basketball in Canada or is it Monsieur, <laughs> Monsieur, Monsieur Basketball? Basketball? You know we also speak English. Though, I know. Right? I, I, so, yeah. <laughs> I gathered that. I've been there, you know. Yeah, Jay spent some quality time in both Toronto and Montreal last summer as uh, we covered the games on Duke's Canadian tour. Yeah, so kind of you to take me to one of the finest restaurants in all of Canada. Yeah. What was it called again? Subway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did it taste a little more exotic, though, being in a foreign country? No. Exactly the same. Liddell inside and he is foul. Boy, Liddell hasn't played a ton, but he's been awfully productive when he's been in there. Another Mr. Basketball from but from Illinois. He was also Liddell, a two-time Illinois State champion. And the last guy to do that was Derek Rose. Good times right now at Ohio State. Third year for Chris Holtman. Very high hopes, as we mentioned, that they could you know, really do some special things this year. Got a nice rotation of eight or nine guys. Maybe that tightens up a little bit as they head into conference play. And they're heading into conference play, by the way, in their next game. Penn State and then at Minnesota the next couple of games for the Buckeyes. Carton, Liddell, Gaffney, and Diallo, who is not here tonight. Diallo's under the weather with the flu, did not make the trip. But the first three, all of whom have appeared in this game, all top 50 players. And that game against Penn State is going to be no joke, because Penn State is good. Lamar Stevens, one of the best players in the country. Good guards, they defend well. 
Also in December Ohio State's going to face Kentucky and they'll play West Virginia as well before the turn of the calendar and then exclusively into Big Ten play once they get into January. They've got a proud tradition. You go back a long way to the early 60s, of course, a national championship team, Jerry Lucas, John Havlicek, and so forth. And more recently, great teams led by Greg Oden and Mike Conley under Thad Mata. Well, you left out a couple players on that 60 team. Larry Siegfried and Bob Knight played on that yes, team for Fred Taylor. These what are kind of throwback unis Ohio State's wearing? They throw down in their throwback unis. These are, these are the sort of the same kind of uniforms that Clark Kellogg and Herb Williams wore back in the day. The lead is up to 14 for Ohio State. Brooks a tough pass in traffic and another one as Robinson finds Black for the bucket. Whether you get the ball into the paint via the pass trying to throw it into a big guy or penetrate North Carolina's got to do a better job of getting it into that light blue area because they are not going to jump shoot their way to a win. Not the strength of this team. The numbers strongly suggest that in the early going this year. Great cut, great find, Liddell to Young. This is a good passing team. Ohio State averages 15, 16 assists per game, but they do a really good job with movement and moving the ball. There's very little standing, whether it's a set play or continuity, whatever they're running on a given, given possession, they move. Great cut by Playtech, and he'll be at the free throw line. That really was a nice cut. Ball went into the post, and he immediately cut from the corner to the basket. Here, the pass out of the double team, and not the extra pass, the right pass to Kyle Young for the finish. Not the kind of offensive juggernaut that Roy Williams is used to coaching here in Chapel Hill. Carolina hasn't hit 80 in any of their first seven games. You got to go back to 1949, the last time that happened. They haven't shot 50% in each of their first in any of their first seven games. You got to go back to 1959, the last time that happened. 40 points, 29% field goals tonight. So it looks like the trends continue. And now I think we can say with complete certainty, Jay, never has this unit, this group of five that is in the game right now, ever been out there together for the Tar Heels as Shea Rush and KJ Smith have come into the game to join Andrew Playtech, Brandon Huffman, and Justin Pierce. I mean, never in a million years could a Carolina fan have come to this game tonight and envisioned this particular group being on the floor as a unit. Certainly not with the game in doubt. And maybe this is Roy Williams just being unhappy with the regulars, with the guys not performing up to snuff. You and I have done games where Roy Williams has taken all five guys out at once. He made four changes here. And we'll see how long he leaves this group in and what they might be able to accomplish. And now Keeling comes in for playtech. Well, KJ Smith played seven, eight minutes against Oregon when Cole Anthony had to come out of the game with foul trouble. Did a really good job running the team. Son of Kenny Smith. Kenny the Jet. Kenny the, the Jet. All time great players here in North Carolina. Pierce. And gets it to go. And you can hear the reaction from the crowd. They know who's on the court, they know who's on the bench. And they appreciate the effort in the bucket. And the first, when was the last time that in this game that North Carolina got a layup? Inside, an easy two for Caleb Wesson. And that's where Ohio State needs to go every time. Put Caleb Wesson down the low post, let him go to work. If he passes it out, then he can play off it. Pierce for three. Yes! Boy, there's some energy on the floor right now with North Carolina. The ball's moving, not sticking. But can this unit get a stop against Ohio State? There's the ball screen with Wesson just rolling down the low post. Now he's got Keeling switched off on him. Now he needs to get the ball. It's a bad pass. Washington needed to take one dribble toward the baseline and get an angle where he could feed it. He was leading Caleb Wesson out of bounds with that pass. And another sub, Roy Williams unhappy with Brandon Huffman the last time down the floor on the defensive end. 
And he angrily called for Walker Miller to go sub in. And right now, it feels like Roy Williams' biggest job is just finding five guys he's not unhappy with to put out there on the court. Well, he couldn't switch there and leave Keeling on Caleb Wesson, where he's guarding, or Huffman's guarding a guard on top. Offensive foul. Miller draws a charge. Chris Holtman's got to be saying, what in the world is going on here? Well, he's probably he's looking at the official saying, come on, man, that, that's a flop. Like, you don't fall that way. And look, it's a smart play by Miller, but watch his shoulders hit the ground first. Like, that's not how you fall when you've been knocked down. And, you know, the, we've been talking about flopping, and there's a new rule in and everything, and it's just enforced in such an odd way. Pierce. Healing nowhere to go. Smith has it knocked away, and it'll be a run out for Ohio State. Washington misses the dunk. Carolina in transition. Pierce for three. Very quick shot, and didn't go straight up, kind of fading to the left as he elevated for that shot. Boy, oh boy, if he'd made that, Jay, might have blown the roof off this place, though, with this lineup on the court. Ohio State needs to slow down and get the ball inside. Mismatch with Smith on Wesson. And another offensive foul. Yeah, I don't know about that one. That's, a, that's a, a terrific play by Smith to switch off and hold his ground, but all he did was turn around here. Yeah, that's a tough one. But good play by K.J. Smith. Battled in front, then got behind. I don't know what you can do there as an offensive player. You don't want to, you don't want to ask a guy fade away against a guard because the referee might call a charge on you. But good play by K.J. Smith. One of the three guys in the game right now for the Heels who rarely plays, along with Miller and Rush. Rush driving baseline, and he draws a foul. Under eight media timeout. Unexpected developments to say the least as guys deep in the Carolina rotation, Jay, trying to get them back into the game. They've changed the energy of the game. It's been positive energy for North Carolina over the last three, four minutes. Pierce knocking down the three and Carolina with some life. Cole Anthony and the starters have been sitting for a few minutes right now. When you won 877 games, as Hall of Famer Roy Williams has, you've earned the right to do things the way you want to do them. He's unhappy with the regulars. He's brought in guys like Shea Rush and Walker Miller and K.J. Smith, who don't play much at all, and they have brought energy, and they have narrowed the gap a little bit on the scoreboard as well. Run into the one and one won't go down for Rush. It was a 14-point deficit when this group came in. It's 11 right now. Let's go to Brooke. Well, guys, in the Ohio State huddle, the coaching staff talking about we don't care who's on the floor for Carolina. We still have to play hard and continue to make plays. Spacing again, a topic, trying to get those threes, but definitely trying to work it inside and play patient. Yeah, they've had success when they've gone inside to Weston, but then he committed a couple of offensive fouls. Walker floats it up. Young and a foul. Anytime that Caleb Wesson sets a screen out on the perimeter, he's getting a switch. So he can get a guard on him down in the post and even though he picked up a, a couple offensive fouls you still have to go inside to him. I mean I don't think the, the officials are going to call an offensive foul after offensive foul for the remainder of the game. Young is 6'8 junior from Canton Ohio has a couple of double doubles already this season one in the season opening game against Cincinnati 14 points 13 rebounds had another one against Stetson. Had a chance to, at shoot around today to talk to. Andrew Dockage of Ohio State. He, he had said that Young, in a lot of ways, has been the MVP in the early season of this team with all the intangibles he brings, his defense, the way he moves the ball, rebounds. Dockage has got a terrific basketball mind. His, his mother must be really <laughs> smart. The son of our colleague, Dan Dockage. She's a program assistant, a member of the staff for the Buckeyes. Carolina's got it down to 10. So Carolina brings this energy with this lineup. So when Roy Williams, if he comes back with his regulars, 
Then all of a sudden, there's a completely different energy in the game. And make it nine. It was scored a three, not a two. And there's a corner three for Carton at the other end to get it back to a dozen. Boy, a really good pass by Caleb Wesson. This group's been in here, Jay, for like three, four minutes. And now, offensive foul. Yeah, and Coach Williams is going to get the regulars back in. And I bet you there's one loud ovation coming from this big crowd for the work done by this group that was on the floor. Yeah, did a good job. And even though it's just a two point difference, they played hard, they moved the ball, they moved themselves. It was just a different energy when they were on the floor. And let's see if the starters bring a different energy now that they are back. 6.37 to go. An unbeaten Ohio State up a dozen on the road here in Chapel Hill. Some sort of an issue, maybe some blood on the shorts of Brandon Robinson as Pat Driscoll and Mike Eads are talking to him. Well, this has been a physical game. Not surprised by all the blood. Well, Anthony was cut earlier up on the forehead, and evidently there is some blood on the jersey of Robinson. And on the shorts of Robinson. After we're done, stick around for Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt. He'll have post game reactions from this one. Plus, Tim Legler breaks down Giannis's impact on the Bucks' historic start and Damian Lillard's cover story debut, why he credits his roots for his success in basketball and a music. Sports Center with SVP next, right here on ESPN and also on the ESPN app. Quick foul on Cole Anthony. Dame Got Lillard. Cylinder. Dame Lillard, an Oakland guy before he went to Weber State. And what a star he is. Is he ever? And this guy, Cole Anthony, is headed in that same direction. He's got a lot of game. He has not been under the weather in this one, and there's a lot of responsibility in his shoulders to score for this team. And with Armando Baycott out for the game early when he twisted that ankle, it took a, a lot of scoring away from North Carolina. He's just coming off a 23 point game against. Oregon in which he had double figure rebounds six blocks and this is for a guy who likes to get up and down the floor and score a ton of points. This has to be really frustrating for Roy Williams to watch. Carton knocks both of them down and the lead is back to 14. But the Carolina had gotten it down to nine and ten on a couple of occasions. The only thing Ohio State's really good defensively I think their guards are a little small and they are they're oftentimes going with three guards out there. Good, good, good job by, by Wesson. Wesson. Yeah. What a difference huh. That play. It'll stay with Ohio State the guards can't convert but what a great play by Wesson probably a play Jay he's not able to make a year ago. He wasn't making that play a year ago he hedged a good 15 feet to take the ball handler out toward half court and really string that out and extend it. So that was a terrific hedge on the ball screen by Caleb Wesson. The new look Caleb Wesson. Yeah. Isn't it funny like a coach will tell you you got to do this you got to do Push this. Off. Offensive. Yeah. And it doesn't always work when a coach tells a player to do something but then you know he tests the waters works out for some teams get some feedback from NBA people. They tell him the same thing that his coach told him then he goes and does it. It's kind of like you know when your kids hear something that a parent says they hear from somebody else sometimes they're more likely to do it. You, you mean you, your kids don't listen to you. What's that like. <laughs> that must be difficult. Yours always do. Oh of course. Yeah, of course. I have their phone numbers you know I can double check this. <laughs> oh, that's disturbing. I, I can fact check this. <laughs> <laughs> CJ Walker all over Cole Anthony not letting him catch it. Robinson turns it over. There's not enough scorers and handlers out on the floor for North Carolina without the ball being able to get back to Cole Anthony, just rudderless on the offensive end. Yeah, and, and also, as you well know, the Buckeyes deserve some credit. I mean, they've been a phenomenal defensive team yes. this year. Uh, all, coming into tonight, only Virginia had a better defensive efficiency 
than Ohio State. And Virginia gave up, what, 69 tonight? I think to Purdue lost 69-40, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, look, Ohio State's very good defensively. All I'm saying is yep. they weren't going to hold last year's Carolina team to 40 points at this stage of the game. That wasn't yeah. going to happen. Yeah, it's a combination of a good defensive team. And, and Carolina can't score. Yeah, Carolina they just can't team, score. Yeah. They just don't have nearly the offensive weapons that they had a year ago. Not even close. Because, you know, that's a telling statistic to be seven games into the season. North Carolina hadn't hit 80. I mean, Roy Williams teams usually hit 80 when they fall out of bed. Walker wide open. Carton to Walker. And it's up to 19. 10-0 run. Buckeyes. And you're asking a North Carolina team when they can't score in this game, you got to get shutouts time and time again. And you're not going to hold Ohio State to 47 points and win the game. This is not going to happen. The same thing, you know, Virginia's dealing with the same thing this year. Virginia can't score either. And they're struggling to score. Yeah. Again, only scored 40 tonight in a lopsided loss to Purdue at Mackey Arena. I'll tell you, Purdue's going to be good. I know they've lost three games, but they're going to be a good team. Big Ten ACC Challenge. Purdue by 29 over the Hoos. Georgia Tech beat Nebraska. Maryland by 21 comfortably over the Irish. Penn State, they're dangerous. A 22-point win over Wake. And the Wolfpack by 15 over Wisconsin. As we take a look at tonight's Sonic Blockbuster. So it is, if my math is right, 7-6 for the Big Ten. So if Ohio State hangs on here, the Big Ten will win the challenge. I'll tell you, keep your eye on Penn State. Pat Chambers has a much improved Nittany Lion team, and Lamar Stevens is really good. He's the real deal. He'll be first team all Big Ten again. But they're going to win a lot of games in State College. A strange couple of nights, Jay. Last night we were up in East Lansing, and Duke beat Michigan State rather handily, and we saw. Big parts of the crowd head for the exits with several minutes left in the game. And we're seeing it here tonight in Chapel Hill as Ohio State has come in here. And over the last few minutes, this now 12 0 run, whatever it is they are, they're starting to string for the exits here with the Dean Dome. Yeah, part of it's the uh, the lack of production. The other part's the 9 30 game. <laughs> <laughs> Under four to go. Ohio State in control. And Roy Williams is going to put his deep bench players in to finish this game up because the last time down Paul Anthony threw the ball away Leaky Black wasn't even looking and that play right there might be the one that upsets Roy of all the things you'll be upset about tonight that one might bother him the most Anthony Short Young another rebound Ohio State's going to go to 8 and 0 oh on the season and the, the deepest members of the bench are getting ready to come in See a couple of guys who haven't even eaten. Smith will be back. Rush will be back. Miller will be back. Anthony tries to steal it. Liddell runs it down. This one can't end fast enough right now if you're a Tar Heel. Carton step back three. And the call is going against Andre Wesson. We'll take a timeout. And it'll be walk ons coming in for Carolina to finish up this one with Ohio State in command. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Continental Tire for what you do. At halftime, they honored the national championship team, the women's field hockey team here at the University of North Carolina, the two-time defending national champions after beating Princeton 6-1 to in the final last week to win the title. But as joyous as that was, is as disappointing as this has been for Tar Heel fans. It's been one sided most of the night and actually the best stretch in the second half the Tar Heels had was with some deep members of the bench in there and the starters came back in and Ohio State just blew them out. Robinson at the line right now for Carolina. Well, really the, a big part of the, the equation going forward. You know, obviously North Carolina is not going to be able to win this game. But going forward for Carolina, where are they going to get scoring from? You know, Rando Baycott hopefully will be back soon. So you have additional low post scoring with Baycott. But they've got to find somewhere other than Cole Anthony and Armando Baycott 
and some Garrison Brooks scoring to pick up points. I mean, that Virginia game's got a chance to be really low scoring on Sunday. If they go to Gonzaga, you'll be out there at the Kennel. Carolina going up to Spokane, UCLA before the calendar turns as well. Justin Arns is coming to the game for Ohio State, younger brother of Kyle Arns of Michigan State. That's him putting up the three. Caleb Ellis and Robbie Ohan, two walk-ons, have checked into the game for Carolina. Ellis 25, Ohan 34. Ohio State switching. Now it has just been a rough night for North Carolina. But you really you look at the strength of the ACC and and look. It, People, how people vote, how they decide to vote at the beginning of the year is up to them. But I, I was really surprised to see Virginia pick up so many, you know, top five votes to be in the top five at this point in the year. It, obviously, their defense has performed very well, and they've been holding teams down to really low numbers. But it was alarming the offensive production issues that Virginia had, and then losing Braxton Key. Uh, that's gonna that's gonna be difficult to overcome. Yeah, losing their three best players, arguably from a year ago, and now key to injury. I mean, think about what North Carolina lost. You know, you think they can get better performances than they've gotten. I don't think this is, this game is indicative of how good North Carolina is. You know, I mean, they just beat Oregon. You know, this team can play at a much higher level than has performed in this game. But they lost their top shooter and scorer, Cam Johnson, who went number 11 in the NBA draft. They lost their point guard and their top handler and another guy that could really score Kobe White. They lost Luke May their best rebounder another guy who could score inside. They lost their best defender and Kenny Williams and all guys and they lost a sincere little little their best athlete and with the exception of little all those guys could shoot and now they've got a group of guys that, that don't make shots at least they haven't made them yet. Brought in Cole Anthony, obviously, but needed big step ups from some of the players who were here last year. They've got a great class coming in next year. Five players ranked in the top 100, but right now there's just clearly not the depth of, of offensive firepower, not close to what we're used to seeing here from Carolina. And really, what North Carolina, and I'm sure they've thought about this, not, not the coaches, but the players, they're, they're not going to be able to outscore people this year. And I, I mean, outscore kind of like out rebound. Uh, they're going to have to they're going to have to have a defensive mentality in order to win games in the ACC and, and getting stops is going to have to be priority number one. So Carolina will drop to six and two on the season. The Buckeyes will remain undefeated. They'll go to eight. No and get ready for an interesting game with Penn State on the weekend. Oh, and Ellis misses and down with the rebound is Arns. Well, that was a pretty play, but. They couldn't convert the shot clock is off and the Ohio State Buckeyes with smiles on their faces and the bench celebrating will come down to Chapel Hill and win handily over North Carolina to go to eight and zero on the season. Well Ohio State is good enough to win the Big Ten. This is a good basketball team. And they're going to continue I believe continue to get, to get better. And with the win the Big Ten wins the challenge eight to six. As they win it for just the sixth time in 21 years, there have been three ties. The ACC's won 12, but the Big Ten, they are the champs this year after this win by Ohio State, and convincingly so here at the Dean Dome. 74 49, the Buckeyes over the Tar Heels for Jay Billis, Brooke Weisbrot, and our crew. I'm Dan Schulman saying thanks for watching. Let's send you to Sports Center.